Dummies themselves have evolved and advanced and they're our link between advanced restraint technologies and our body designs and actually the real world. I have an undergrad in biomedical engineering, which I actually wanted to be a doctor, but I loved the engineering side of it. So it was a perfect combination to do the bio side of the engineering world. Out of college, I got hired in at an independent test facility working actually with the crash engineers that are my colleagues, so working for Honda. And they would come over and the way that they displayed their passion, their challenging spirit, their joy was so contagious that I knew I had to work for Honda. And so when the opportunity came, I took it. So at the R&D Center in Ohio, our capability to do full-scale crash testing is extremely high. Where we're at here today is in the dummy lab. In here, we maintain our dummies and calibrate our dummies so that it keeps up with our efficiency and our actual development process. Right next door is our crash barrier in which these dummies are used on a daily basis, maybe two or three times a day, in which we validate all of our safety designs. So our crash dummies come in a variety of sizes and it really backs up our whole safety philosophy, which is safety for everyone. And so we're able to actually develop and design our restraint devices for different size occupants. We have smaller females or actually teenage size dummies. We have mid-sized males and actually large males that we're able to make sure that our designs and our restraint technologies match well with the different occupant sizes out there and not one size fits all. The advancement in the dummy technology has just even recently in the last couple of years has greatly increased. For example, typically we would use what we call hybrid three dummies. They're an average size male occupant. They have been replaced with the Thor dummy, which is a more biofidelic, more human-like dummy that is able to measure different things that the previous generation dummies couldn't do. And we're able to use that different information, those different sensors and actually allow us to advance our technologies in ways that we haven't been able to do prior to these new dummies. I interviewed with both a body design group and a safety group, but I thought, you know, crash testing cars would be super exciting and that was the direction I went. I went to school at Kettering University in Flint, Michigan. I studied mechanical engineering and I have always had a passion for automotive engineering. I've always been into cars. What better place to end up than Honda? Today we're in the pedestrian impact lab. In this lab, we actually do component level tests to simulate the different parts of a pedestrian's body as it would be impacted by a vehicle on the roadway. One of the most important component tests that we run is a head impact test. The largest number of fatalities with regards to pedestrian impact is related to head injury. We are conducting this test to understand the energy absorbing characteristics of the vehicle. There's considerable challenges with protecting pedestrians with regards to the styling and balancing. So you can think about it like a sedan or a sports car. The stylist would prefer to have an extremely low hood, but we have to find the right balance where we can maintain enough crushable space or energy absorbing space between hard components in the engine room, like the engine or some suspension components. We've been adding pedestrian protection systems for years now. For example, we've, we're one of the first to help develop breakaway wipers so that in the case of a pedestrian impact, the head would come down and hit something very rigid would break away, so it would help dissipate that energy. I think pedestrian safety is one of the core principles that's wrapped up in the safety for everyone philosophy because again, we're not only focusing on the occupants inside our vehicles, but we're also considering the pedestrians and the cyclists that are vulnerable to the traffic on today's roadways. My work at Honda, I definitely think about my family and how these types of decisions that I make at work could potentially influence them in the real world. One of the most rewarding things for me working in Safety Group is when we receive letters from our customers, you know, and that gets shared to, you know, our safety department, but it really hits home because they're driving the vehicles that we spent years to develop and we know that we've had a positive influence on their lives. The safety for everyone philosophy really hits home when the vehicles that we develop here gets into the hands of, of my daughter and my son. We're in the control room right now in our crash barrier. 
and I'm the manager of the crash safety department here at Honda R&D. This lab was commissioned in 2003, and we run about 200, 225 full-scale tests right here in our lab. This is the final stop in our development process. This is after we've done thousands of simulations and thousands of sled tests, component tests. This is the final stop before those vehicles get into the hands of the customers. What we're sitting on is a 90 metric ton concrete block that's our impact barrier, and it can rotate 360 degrees and it's very efficient. So one day we can do a test, rotate at 90 degrees and do a different impact, a different barrier type test. So very state of the art. On any given development, we might do 30 different types of tests here in this lab. And we're actually able to take information we learn from real world crash, real world, how people are getting hurt in the real world and replicate that in here in our lab and do experiments and to be able to protect those occupants so when they go out in the real world and get into a crash, we can develop safety features here at R&D the old notion that the bigger car, the safer car. Well, that's not always the case. It's all about energy management and the design of our ACE body structure, the multitude of frames and load paths to dissipate that energy and how we get that energy in that crush zone away from the occupants. So bringing that energy down away and underneath the occupants, taking your engine and dropping it down and away so it doesn't intrude into the lower leg area. Those sort of things is what really makes the ACE body structure very valuable. So that same methodology is applied across the board. Where we're headed right now is is a perfect direction of both active safety and passive safety. I think they're gonna be needed together for quite a while where you know the passive safety side of, of what we do heavily relies on, on some active safety systems, being able to dissipate that energy in a potential collision. Slowing that car down five, 10, 15 miles an hour is a huge energy savings and really puts a lot of less burden on the passive systems. And with advancements in airbag and safety restraint technologies, as well as different materials, different aluminum, maybe those sort of lightweight materials, the advancements and the opportunities will be there for years to come. On a personal level, I have two drivers that are in my household, my daughter and my son. Of course, they drive Honda vehicles, but to be able to take that knowledge, that experience that we've learned here at Honda by doing what we do and applying that to a personal level to my family members, right? And making sure that, that they're safe. They're always wearing their seatbelts. They understand how the systems work so that they can understand that. And the education is key. It means that much more in, in doing the right thing for our customers and for my family. And so there are a lot of different tests that we do now that weren't around 20 years ago that continue to make our cars better. I grew up in a very remote area in the northwest corner of Nebraska. The town I went to school in was only a couple hundred people. My graduating class was only 14. In 1987, some friends of mine were out driving on gravel roads outside of town. The vehicle they were in was a pickup truck and it rolled over. And just like that, three of my friends are gone. That's extremely devastating to any community, but especially something where there's 200 people in the entire town. It's something that people just don't get over that easily. Safety for everyone extends beyond the occupants inside the vehicle or the pedestrians or the bicyclists or even occupants in other vehicles. Safety for everyone to me extends to those family members that have lost their loved ones in automobile collisions. They're the people that have to figure out how to move on and live without that person for the rest of their life. For me, safety for everyone really uh, extends to those people as well, trying to protect them. Each year in the United States, there's about 37,000 U.S. roadway fatalities. We take that very personally. It's something that we're committed to trying to improve. We take a look at how people are hurt and killed on U.S. roadways. For example, we know about 30% or more fatalities actually come from road departures. Some of those road departures are with rollovers and some of those road departures are without rollovers. And so of course, keeping that vehicle on the road is extremely important. And that's why we're committed to adding Honda Sensing to all of our vehicles our capability at research and development here in Ohio has been evolving over the past 20 or 30 years. And it's taken a long time to get to the point where we're at now, but we have that full capability to do a full development as well as platform developments. And we're also doing fundamental development of core safety technologies like airbag systems. We do receive many letters from actual customers that have survived terrible collisions. And 
When you see a letter like that and you know that the work you did helped protect them, helped to protect their family, it's very easy to understand why these engineers are so motivated and so dedicated to what they do. We know what we're doing is saving lives and there's nothing that could be more important than that.